This battery needs a project. Let's see what we can make happen today. Stick around and we'll get right to it. All right, so this cycling bat is going to be the basis of this project. We're going to be building a large battery box based on this 100 amp hour battery. Now, note this is the mini size. Uh, some of the larger batteries will not fit in the Pelican style cases. Well, at least not the Pelican style case that I had. I suppose you could get one large enough to fit multiples of these batteries if you really wanted to. But I've got this single mini 100 amp hour battery that we're going to be working with today. Now, what I always prefer to do is start with a simple drawing to help me kind of lay things out and understand the way I want things connected. And it helps to keep me from making any mistakes as we install things. Now, I agree, this is a really poor drawing, but it's good enough for what I'm doing today. We're going to start with the battery. Remember, this is a very simple build that we're doing. Uh, we're going to start with the battery over here. We're going to feed that through a meter. That way we can keep uh, an accurate account of how much is coming into or going out of the battery. From the meter, we're going to feed into a fuse block. And from the fuse blocks, we're going to feed into the power pole connectors on the outside of the box. Now, I've only drawn one here, but there will be a total of four power pole connectors. And each of those will have their own individual fuse on the fuse block. The primary tools I'll be using is a set of side cutters. We've got a set of wire strippers and crimpers all in one tool. We've got power pole connectors right here, a basic Phillips head screwdriver, and then a paddle bit. I'm going to use the paddle bit to drill out the holes for the Anderson uh, panel connectors since I can't seem to find my step bit this morning. The last tool that I'm going to be using is my Gerber razor knife. I keep this in my pocket all the time and absolutely love this device. Uh, I beat the mess out of this thing and I like the fact that with one screw I can swap the blade and have a sharp knife once again. Now let's talk about some of the components we're going to be using in this build. I do have this PowerWorks uh, panel chassis mount power pole adapter. However, these things have gotten crazy expensive. These are now $30 a piece. So I did have one on hand, but I wanted two for this project. So what I ended up doing was 3D printing the exact same thing. So now I have these in the bright orange with two power poles on each of these panel mounts. So that uh, was a whole lot cheaper than buying the ones from PowerWorks. In addition to that, I've simply got a fuse block over here with the uh, fuses. They're not in it yet, but we'll get to that. Uh, I do already have the wire pre-made up that's going to attach to the fuse block. And then we've got some ring terminals over here that we will be using. I will be mounting the fuse block with some industrial strength Velcro. So I'm going to just stick this to this side. This side will stick to the inside of the case and that should keep it from moving around. And we're going to be housing all of this in a Pelican style case. Now I happen to already have this Pelican style case laying around. I believe this is going to be the equivalent of the Apache 3800 from Harbor Freight, but you'll definitely need to do your own measurements before taking my advice on exactly which case you're going to need for your project. All right, so now I'm just kind of dry fitting everything to make sure that uh, everything's going to work out the way I want to as far as space constraints go. I do already have the panel mounts for the power poles down here. You should be able to see those on the very bottom. And when I put those together, I left plenty of wire on those to give me options when I started putting this thing together. I do down here in the very bottom have the fuse block. I have not mounted it just yet. The only thing that I don't have right at this particular minute is the exact meter that I want to go in here. I do have one on order from Amazon uh, that will handle up to 200 amps. It will be power pulled, so it won't be a big deal to go ahead and put it in line after we get this assembled. For now, I think I'm going to just go ahead and carry on without it. And when that comes in later today, I'll go ahead and rewire this thing. But I needed to get the majority of this box done this morning uh, before a trip we've got coming up next week.
All right, and here's what the finished results look like. You'll notice we've got the terminals coming off the battery, feeding into an Anderson power pole. This is the connection I will split here and put the meter in as soon as it arrives. Everything is fed into the fuse block here and then out to these two panel, uh, panel mounts for the power poles. So the last thing we need to do is check voltage and make sure we've got good voltage at each of these four connections. All right, let's see if we can get that so we can both see the meter here. And let's check that first one right there. Looks like we've got good voltage there. How about the second one? Yep, looking good. Third one, perfect. And finally, the last one. Yep, good voltage. This is ready to go. So there is a very simple battery box build. I wanted to keep this thing ridiculously simple with minimal points of failure in it, but I wanted the ability to run up to four HF radios if we decided to. So each of those ports is uh, fused for 20 amps. I probably will never run four HF radios off of it, but I wanted that capacity. I wasn't worried about USB uh, charging off of this particular box. I've got other battery boxes that will handle that. And if I really needed to, I could plug in something like this cigarette lighter adapter that would give me a power port and allow me to charge USB or USB-C right from that particular device. Also, I can back charge through any one of those four ports with a solar panel to be providing juice back to the battery, even while it's being depleted through the other three ports. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.